episode of Demetra's Dishes. Today we are freezer prepping and the star ingredient is going to be ground beef. Of course you can use ground chicken, ground lamb, ground turkey, ground whatever suits your fancy to use in these three recipes that I'm going to teach you how to make. So in my house we are a party of seven so we do not get to do the the cool meal prepping that people do on Sundays and prepare, prepare meals for the whole week because it's kind of hard to do that on a big scale. I mean, it probably is doable, but I prefer to do it this way. I prefer to stock my freezer with easy things just to pull out and just pull together a quick family meal any time of the day or any day of the week. So today we're gonna to be prepping uh, beef turnovers with phyllo and mozzarella cheese. We're gonna make our basic meat sauce, which is basically, basically gonna be the filling for the turnovers, but it's also gonna be standalone by itself. I'm gonna freeze it because you can do so many things with it and we'll go over it while, during the video. And then last but definitely not least, we're gonna make keftedes because they freeze beautifully. Keftedes are meatballs. Let's get started. So this recipe, which is the basic meat sauce, starts off with a whole lot of ground beef. I choose to buy the lean ground beef, which is 90% lean basically because I don't. I like to add the olive oil in it for the fat. Now you can double this recipe and just use two big pots. It's gonna be ready in the same amount of time and you will be so happy you did on those busy weeknights when you don't have anything to put together. It starts off with a lot of onions. I'm using three big onions because did I say we have four pounds of ground beef? So four pounds of ground beef, we're gonna begin by thin finally chopping the onions. So into the pot they go and make sure you have some tissues handy because these onions might make you cry a little bit. But if you're making a big batch like I am, you can definitely take out the food processor and you know, make your life easier. I should have thought of that too late now, but maybe you guys can do that. Because we're gonna use the food processor in a little bit anyway when we make the meatballs. So in they go, a lot of onions equal a lot of flavor. Next, we're gonna add the olive oil, about three quarters of a cup probably will be just the right amount. That looks about right, I don't measure. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna let these cook over medium heat until they're nice and soft and golden. And now I'm gonna grate the garlic cloves while we're waiting. So usually one batch of this is for one pound of beef and it calls for like four garlic cloves. So I must have about 16 over here. So I'm gonna grate the garlic cloves. So grating this garlic reminds me of this meme that I saw on Facebook the other day. It was literally the other day. It was a picture of this Greek grandma and the caption was something like, when Yaya sees a recipe that calls for two or three cloves of garlic and it was like a mountain of garlic that she was getting ready to put into the pot. Yep, that's me. <laughs> so the onions are ready. Now it's time to add the garlic and I'm gonna add it in and let it warm through for a couple of seconds. That's good enough. Now we're gonna add the ground beef. Now it's time for the seasonings. We're gonna add some salt. Since there's four pounds of beef, I'm gonna add three teaspoons of salt. And then later on, I'm gonna taste it and see if it needs more. I'm also gonna add some black pepper. I'm gonna go with a whole teaspoon, but add as much or as little as you like. And some crushed red pepper flakes for heat. Those are optional. Now, if this was fully thawed out, it would be great because it would brown up really quickly or cook up a little bit quicker. I'm just gonna flip it over a few times just so it can separate a little bit and just break up. And then I'm gonna go in and add my tomatoes. I have two cans, one big can, I think it's 32 ounces, all the measurements are gonna be down below, and a smaller 15 ounce can that I just pureed because they weren't crushed tomatoes. One was whole tomatoes and the other one was diced tomatoes and we like a very smooth sauce. So I'm just gonna add the tomatoes with a little bit of oregano and I'm gonna let this cook until the sauce reduces and the meat is fully cooked. It should take about 30, 40 minutes or so and I'll show you what it looks like as soon as we're there. So the next recipe we're moving on to are Greek meatballs and they're also known as keftedes. They are the perfect thing to freeze and they're the perfect thing to find in your freezer as a matter of fact because you could use them in so many different ways. Once they're frozen, you can go ahead and broil them directly out of the freezer. You put them on a baking tray, you brush them with some olive oil and you put them directly under the broiler until they're nice and golden. Then you can pop them into some tomato sauce. You can put them in some pita pockets with some tzatziki and make a nice sandwich. There's a million ways to use them. All of the ways are gonna be written down on the blog post on demetrosdishes.com, so make sure you check that out. But let's make the meatballs first. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna chop up everything in my food processor. So I have three garlic cloves in here. The recipe usually calls for two because I'm using two pounds of ground beef, but I'm gonna add one more for good luck, for good measure, it's gonna make it extra tasty. Next, we're gonna add two onions that I've peeled and I've just quartered. And I'm just gonna pulse it a few times until they're finely chopped. 
And when they're almost there, they're still kind of chunky for my liking. When they're at this point, I'm gonna go in and add some parsley. Now fresh parsley is best, but I didn't have any on hand, but I do freeze parsley, so I always have some in my freezer. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a big handful of the parsley into the mixer and pulse it a few times until the onions are finely chopped. And that looks pretty good. This is what the mixture should look like. Now I'm gonna add the onion mixture to the beef mixture. I have two pounds of lean ground beef over here, which is 90% lean and I think it has about 10% fat just the way I like it. Then I'm gonna add some panko breadcrumbs. You could use any breadcrumbs that you have. These are unseasoned. I'm also gonna add a cup of whole milk, two eggs, and I'm just gonna beat them slightly with a fork. A teaspoon of salt, as much black pepper as you like. I'm gonna do about a half a teaspoon, but you can put less and some crushed red pepper flakes, which are totally optional. And I like to do two teaspoons of dried oregano. And my recipe calls for a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, but I don't have any, so I'm gonna leave it out. It's totally fine if you leave it out, but if you do have it, you can go ahead and add some. It just adds great flavor. And now I'm just gonna go in and mix this all together with my hand until it's all combined. So once your mixture is ready, now it's time to form the meatballs. You can do them as big or as small as you like. But this is the size that I like. It's a typical meatball size. I don't know what it is. It's almost like a golf ball. And put them on a baking tray. So I made 48 meatballs. It all depends on how big or small you make them, how many you're gonna have, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be between 40 to 48. Gives you a big bang for your buck. I can make two meals with this, maybe a little more. It just depends how I use them. I love to pan fry these a little bit and serve them with tzatziki if I'm serving them as a starter or as an appetizer. One of my favorite, all-time favorite meals is meatball saganaki. Of course, I could also bake these with some lemony potatoes. There are so many options and they're all going to be listed in the blog. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm, I need to freeze them. So I'm going to put the trays in the freezer and I'm going to wait for about an hour and a half or so until they harden and they're frozen solid. Then I'm going to transfer them into freezer safe bags. If you don't have freezer safe bags or you don't use them, you can put them in a freezer safe container where they will stay fresh for months. They're not gonna last that long for sure because once you know you have these in there, you're gonna make something delicious with them. The recipe is gonna be down below in the description box. I'm gonna freeze them and then we're gonna move on to making the turnovers. So it took about 45 minutes for the meat sauce to thicken to this consistency. If you're making it uh, to pour over pasta or to use it for a stew, you don't have to wait for it to get that thick. You could leave a little bit of liquid in it. It's just totally up to you. I'm gonna use half of it because I'm gonna freeze it to put in containers for pasta sauce and stews, and the other half I'm gonna use, or the other portion, I'm gonna to use to make these delicious beef turnovers that even when they're frozen, they're ready in like 45 minutes. You cannot beat that. They're flaky because they're made with phyllo. My mouth is watering. So I'm, I just transferred more than half of the meat sauce into a freezer safe container, and I'm gonna freeze that for later use. And again, you can get two batches out of that because we, we're a family of seven, so I always have to keep extra on hand. But you can definitely do two batches out of that if you're feeding like a family of three or four. I can make so many things with it. I could just rewarm it and then put a little bit of water in it so I can thin it out just a little bit to have more sauce. Of course, season as you go. And then you can just finally chop some parsley on top and put it over pasta and serve that as a dinner. Who would not want that? You could also make a little stew with this by putting this in the pot, putting some water, some diced potatoes, and maybe some uh, frozen peas or whatever your favorite vegetables are, even some spinach would be great. And then just simmer it until the vegetables are fully cooked, season, taste it, taste it and adjust the seasoning if it's needed. There are so many things you could do with it. But one of my favorite appetizers to serve at a party using this meat sauce is, I put it out and make sure it's nice and thick. You don't want too much liquid in it. So, uh, put some pita chips around it. Put some uh, sour cream on top and some sliced scallions and maybe some parsley. If you want a little heat, you can finally slice some jalapenos. If you want me to show that recipe in an upcoming episode, comment down below and I'll make sure that I'll put it on my list so I can do that. There are so many ways to serve this meat sauce. You can put it in pastizio or moussaka. 
I can go on and on here for hours, but <laughs> I'm not going to spend all your time discussing meat sauce. So that's recipe number two. And using recipe number, number two, which is the meat sauce, we're going to make the phyllo and beef turnovers. Now, I did show how to do these in a previous episode, so I'm just going to go through it really quickly with you guys. Basically, it's layers of buttery phyllo with a little bit of mozzarella cheese and the meat sauce wrapped up into little triangles. They freeze beautifully. You can definitely use puff pastry if you don't have phyllo, or you can make my curudo. I'll put the card up here that has the chicken turnover video and the spinach pie video for, that has my curudo recipe in that. I feel like I'm babbling. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, ask me questions below and I'll, I'll answer as many as I can. Now, as far as the cheese goes, you can use feta or you can use mozzarella or whatever your favorite is. I'm using uh, mozzarella today because the kids love the way it melts uh, with the meat sauce. It just tastes so good. But uh, I like to buy the big block of mozzarella from Costco. It's very cost effective and it lasts forever. I just like to cut it into slices, not too thick and not too thin. And then I put them in freezer safe bags and I just take out a slice or two as I need it and I shred it. Today, I'm just gonna dice it into little pieces just like I have here. And I'm just gonna put it in the turnovers. But again, you can use feta if you want. I'm not using it today because I'm kind of low on time. We're having some friends over tonight and I need to do this video and then prepare dinner. So when you're working with phyllo, you want to make sure that you thaw it out overnight in the refrigerator because it does come frozen and you never want to try to open up a pack of frozen phyllo. <laughs> You'll never be able to work with it. So thaw it overnight in your refrigerator then take it out and leave it in its packaging and leave it at room temperature for at least an hour before you work with it. So I'm going to cut it into three pieces, three equal pieces. So you can take out a ruler or eyeball it. I'm doing these appetizer size, so I'm doing three pieces. If you want to make them a little bit bigger and serve them with like a soup or a salad as a main course, then just cut it into two pieces so they can be bigger. But I think this size is really cute. Leave those on the side. I'm actually going to cover them so that way they don't dry out, just like that. And we're gonna work with one portion at a time. I have my little assembly line here. I have my melted salted butter. I like to use salted butter for this. My mozzarella cubes and the meat sauce. So I'm gonna take one sheet at a time and I'm gonna drizzle some of the uh, butter. I was gonna say oil, this is butter. You can use olive oil if you want, but the melted butter adds so much more flavor. Then I'm gonna to top it with the next sheet. We're gonna do two sheets at a time. If by any chance, if, you know, by any chance or for any reason, the sheets are stuck together and you get two stuck together, don't worry about it. Just use two and then you'll have like three um, layers, which will be fine. A tablespoon of the meat sauce. I'm gonna put two cubes or three of the, what is it called, mozzarella. And then we're gonna roll it up like a flag. Keep rolling, keep it on the tighter side. Just like that, you end up with a little triangle. You wanna put it on a baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. So let's do that one more time. You need a sheet of phyllo, a drizzling of butter, no need to brush. Another sheet of phyllo on top. Some more butter, cause butter makes everything better. A spoonful of the meat mixture meat sauce and a few cubes of cheese then you're going to take one end one corner and you're going to put it up to the opposite corner like that and so that way you make a little triangle then keep your finger down so that we can hold the filling in and keep folding it up and over just like you would fold a flag just like so until you get to the top and then place it on a baking tray and keep doing this until you run out of phyllo or until you make as many as your heart desires. Once you're done forming the turnovers and go ahead and brush them with some melted butter. Now the butter is optional. If you have some melted butter left over from drizzling in between the phyllo layers and you can just brush the melted butter on top. If you are gonna add melted butter, then make sure that you freeze them until they're solid. So that way when, then when you go ahead to wrap them with the plastic wrap, the plastic doesn't stick to the butter and then when you take the plastic out, it's gonna rip off the phyllo and you don't want that mess on your hands. So you can also leave the butter off and then just brush them with butter right before you're ready to bake them, whenever that's gonna be. I had another, I wanted to make a few more and I had another pack of phyllo that was already used in my refrigerator. 
it was a bigger pack where I had cut the whole roll in half. So I did make a few extra bigger turnovers, which did not have butter on top. So then I did go ahead and I wrapped it with plastic wrap. Be sure to wrap it airtight. That's very important. So that way they stay nice and fresh. If you wrap them airtight, they'll stay fresh in your refrigerator for three, in your freezer actually, for three months. And when you go to bake them, they will taste like they were just assembled. There are so many options, you guys. One thing, one ingredient, one main ingredient, which is ground meat, I used ground beef today, can make so many different recipes for you. And I love to do that because I love to keep things simple, use pretty much the same flavors and the same spices so you don't have to run out and buy different things just to meal prep or freezer prep like I'm doing. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more, let me know in the comment section down below. All of the links to the recipes are gonna be in the description box down below. Thank you all for spending time with me today. And if you wanna see a tzatziki video, then go ahead and click over here and I will see you right over there. Bye everyone.